Hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Going to give a little bit of time to get in here and to share some. Hope you're all doing good. I know, second time for me today. Isn't that crazy? Okay, let me see if I can find my video that's live right now so I can share. Why did I go to history? That makes no sense. There we are. In today, isn't that crazy? Go to share, go to blanks, go to blank, go to blank, go to blank, go to blank. Share that, copy, gotta go to a couple things real quick. Hi, Ruth, how are you doing this evening? I'll get started here in just a few minutes. I'm just sharing to some site, you know, to share so that people will come and say hello and, you know, hang out. So feel free to share and stuff while you're here if you'd like to. I know that crazy this is my second live today. But I needed to get this done because I had a couple I needed to get done and I've been wanting to do this. And after this week, I'll probably not be doing lives for a couple of weeks. It's my birthday Friday. But next week, I'm having some my teeth removed. And then the week after that, I'm having the rest of them removed. So I probably won't be feeling like talking too much and... All that fun stuff. Oh, did you? Awesome. I got some nice stuff. I think that's enough sharing. If people come, they come. If they don't, I'm not going to cry about it. They'll watch it on the rerun. <laughs> so, what I'm hoping to do today is share. I've been playing with this for a bit now. Working up different things for a thank you. Um, how to make faux leather patches. You can use them for your journals. You can use them for all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can make these bigger if you have good, you know. Um, oh, like, I don't think, do they make big, huge embossing folders? I don't know. But it depends on what you've got handy. And you don't really need a emboss, embossing folders if you, if you don't have, I mean, if you just like the look of it, of stuff, I haven't figured out how to get an embossed look yet without having a bossing thing. So that one's, I still gotta, I gotta work out. Sorry. You know, it's what it is. Um, anyways, so I have been dibbling and dabbling and figuring out a few different ways. I, I mean, I've started one way and I've evolved, it has evolved. Because I wanted this to be able for something for people to do and do it easily and with, with, with a little bit of a budget or with a low budget. So that was my plan for this. And so that's why I've taken a little bit. When I started off, I'll show you. This is when I started off, I had, my mom had got bring home these blank photos that never printed so it was just the white photo paper and i embossed them and i put um inks on them and then i did some other stuff to them to tone them down and try to make these look like leather which they kind of do but i was thinking well not everybody's gonna have their hand you know and you're not gonna go out and buy photo paper that actually doesn't work very well i tested it and it was one of those eh, okay Good idea, but no. So then I went to this paper, which is just the brown paper that you get. Um, I get this in my Chewy boxes every week. 
I get more and more of this brown shipping paper. And I'm like, what am I, I need to do something with it. So I take about two, you can do three, I would say you can do between two and three layers of this Mod Podge glued, whatever, however you want to do it together. So you get a little bit thickness and it's not, doesn't eat, rip as easy. I found that two is good. So I do that. Where'd I put things? Oh, Lordy. No. So this is kind of what though. You know what they look like when you're done. It's just a square bumps together. Now there are three ways to add your color to these. And that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with all three ways and then we'll work our way up going back and forth. And you can use, I would say you can use brown paper bag. You could use, um, probably anything you want. I, I find that this, because of the kind of texturiness to it and stuff and the inexpensiveness. And honestly, if you've got crappy friends and you don't have any of, they, of these, uh, you can always say, hey, does anybody got any of that paper they can send me? I can, I've got lots of it. If anybody needs any, comment below. Leave me your email. I'll email you and I can send you a, a couple things of it. Um, yeah, two or three layers at the most. I would, I mean, this is two layers. Three layers just makes it a little bit more sturdier, but you should be good. Um, you can color, I color before embossing. I, I just found that worked better for me. You do a little bit of after embossing too, but the my main base color I, I, I have been doing before embossing. So... First thing we're going to start with was my first my first thing I tried out, which was just the cheap Artist Loft uh, watercolors. Okay. Which I'll need a little bit of water for that, too. And where's my watercolor one? doesn't really matter which one I'm using. I just think you want kind of a floofy brush. Just it helps, I think. So I'll put these up here. This one's always clogging. Where's my thing when I need it? I had an exacto for this purpose. I have four of them. I think you could find one. Really? I just have to use scissors. The pokey one. <laughs> Hi, sir. Eek. Okay. Had to get that on. So we'll take you to just put a little bit of your watercolors out, which I'm not, there's no sense in me putting them out where you have to see them. Ooh, that was like, a, that was like Dr. Pimple Popper looking thing. You really, you mean, it depends on, I've done a whole sheet. I've, I have glued together a whole big, big sheet of this. And then I've colored it, and then I've cut it. So you can do it that way, too. Let me put a little bit of water over here. And then it's just... Now, I found the best technique. Don't be going... Just smooch around. Smooch around. Just smooch it. In circles. Now this is using, I'm using burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and burnt umber for my colors. Because, you know, some leathers are a little different and they have a little bit more tonage. And 
stain age and age to them. So I try to take that into the factor. And most of your things will dry darker. Remember that. But I tried not to use too expensive of products because I want this to be be able to be done on a budget if you need to. But I do have a, a few options for a little bit more, you know, if you want to put a little bit more into it. But it's not a... Now you see how that swirliness and stuff, it kind of gives it more of a leathery. And when it dries, it'll dry. Where'd I stick it? Ah. It'll dry more like that. Ignore the shiny gold. Let me tell you something. Yes, the paint is watered down. And yeah, you just smooch it. Um... I bought some gold leaf. I was playing with some gold leaf. My suggestion is have a little tiny mini vacuum sucking at the same time. Otherwise, you get gold leaf everywhere. And I got it on this, but it doesn't really matter because this is just to show for stuff. So it'll dry like that. A, a, you know, it dries a, a little lighter, but more leathery, I think, you know. But you can add to it or you can, you know, whatever you like. So I'm going to move this over to the side because now. Now this was, I'm, right now I'm doing, this is what I, my first initial, what I did. And that's what, like these are done with. This, this is what these right here were done with. The, you know, any of these looking ones, these are all done this technique. All these are done with this technique, okay? So, then you'd want to get your handy dandy embosser out with your folder. Make sure you put it right side up. Put it all in there. So now we got the handy dandy embossing folder. It's nicely embossed. You can kind of tell it more on the back side than you can on the front side. Now, what I did next, and this was to give this a tooth. The sheets, hon. I got the sheets. I got them from Wish, so. <laughs> Good question, is there a good question? I'm actually trying to figure out if there's a way to do a little bit of embossing without having to have that. You have, I got to figure out if there's, I mean, there might be some places that's, you know, that's how to emboss paper without a, without a an embosser. Honestly, I would, you know what, let me try something. I mean, your, emboss, your embossing things, your, my emboss, these embossing folders I got at, Tuesday morning for like three bucks. Okay. So let me try something. Where did I just put that folder? I don't know where I put the folder. I'll have to grab another one. Oh, I need a fancy one. Just like the ones I have right now. Don't ask me how I just lost that folder because I think I found it. Did I find it? No. 
How did I just lose that folder? <laughs> Anywho, I'll find, hold, let me find a decent folder. Okay, we'll say this folder, okay? These are only two, three bucks. You use a stencil and a style. You probably could. You're just not going to get the dimension. If you want to mention, like, you can get, okay, look, we're going to try this right now. I just, this is just the, fold, the folder. I mean, you, this is very cheap and expensive. I'm wondering if you could just apply pressure, maybe even with a rolling pin or something, which I don't have a rolling pin <laughs> at the time right now, but I, oh, I have a, whatchamacallit. Where is it at? I have a brayer. Yeah, you could do, you know, while the while the paper is wet. While the paper is wet with the glue and because the glue is between them. You could try that, like maybe mist it a little bit, but then try that like that. That's another good one, Azur. So let's see. Uh, you know what? That didn't do much, but it's probably because you really got to apply pressure to it. A lot of pressure. So let's see if I really put pressure on it. <sighs> oh, not, yeah, you, you kind of can get some of it, but I think that the rolly thing, you really have to do a lot of. It's possible. It's just you know, going to be hard as far as that part goes. Now, okay, let's, you know what? Do I have any? Let's try another thing. Let's try what we were just talking about. Let's get this wet. Or dampish. So now this is wet. I mean, I, mean, I don't have my misters are have no water in them, and the water I have I wasn't going to put in my misters because it's dirty water, dirty, dirty water. Who wants dirty water in their misters? Not me. And usually my misters and my water brushes. I honestly usually have to go buy one. Use uh, distilled water. It keeps you from getting built, you know, like nasty build up and stuff in them. Oh, that did that helped a little bit. Yeah, something like that would help. Okay, so they helped it some. There's something, something new figured out. We'll let that dry, see what happens. Okay. Now, back to this. What I did next what I did next with this because I wanted it to give a tooth because of the first thing, my first technique I had learned. So, this is your more extensive technique out of most of this, this is going to be the more extensive so then i took um i need another i have no i have nothing around here for doing for doing diddly squat 
I got to get some new brushes and all kinds of stuff. So then what I used is I used some clear gesso. And you do not want to use much. You want to work it around your paper. I apply it in circles so it doesn't get too built up around all the edges. Now this you can you can do this. You could have done this step prior to the to doing the embossing. So that you I mean this it's probably quicker and easier to do it without embossing first. So And yeah, you'll reactivate a little bit of your paint, but it's not going to make a difference. Oh, you're fine, hon. You're fine. It, you know, sometimes it helps. That's why, you know, because I would rather be live and have people ask me some questions and we can maybe play. Or I can be like, okay, that's a note I'll need to take and try that out for you later on. Than to try, you know, try to film one of these and then have come on to 7,000 questions that I'm like, uh, when I can deal with it right now, you know. So you just kind of smoosh this around. So get that nice and coated with that, okay? This is just clear gesso. This is, uh, you don't have to do the clear gesso. I'll be showing you other, other, other techniques as well. With the, you don't have to involve the gesso. And you don't want it on too thick. You don't want a big build ups and stuff. You just want to kind of have it do its little thing. Now, I'm going to mute for one minute while I, uh, can I, I can mute, right? Where's my thingy? I got to do this. Okay, I'm mute. am I unmuted now? Knocking stuff everywhere. So this has been once this is dried. Once this has dried, then I use this. This is the ceramic coat wax. Okay, and you just you you don't want to put it on too thick. Just a dibble dabble. Just you just put it on there enough. You you work it around. Don't let it get a built big build up. Okay. Now I'm not going to finish covering this right now because this this stuff. This is your timely part. Is this stuff? This stuff, you have to wait about 24 hours for it to dry, okay? That's your biggest time consumer in this direction is you have to wait for that to dry. Now, when that has dried, oh, where, where is that? Do I have one? That, I thought I had one that was dried. 
dry with nothing else done to it. I must not. Okay. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Because I can just add to it. Because this one's kind of... Ugh. No, I can't do it that way. Oh, that's what I'll do. This one I don't care for. Anyways, so we'll pretend that I didn't put that wax on this yet. Because no matter what, I can do that. Now, once... Um, Did I just do a step wrong? Hold on. Yes, I did my step wrong. So we'll deal with this side over here, not the wax side. Okay. The wax doesn't come yet. <laughs> Oops. I because I, I forgot this this one step. Sorry. I even forgot to list this in my thing. That's what live's about. Now I have to find my dis my dispenser thing. Oh, why can't I ever find anything when I need it? There they are. Now, anyhow, reverse. The wax part does not exist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what you're gonna do before the waxing? This is where some more money comes in. You can use that. I've used this, or and I have used this, which is the Jane Davenport pastels. You can use any kind of pastel, chalky pastel, oil pastel, to try to get this effect. So what I do is you just I just take it and I smoosh it around a little bit of different colors just to add to that old feel. So, you see that look there? It's kind of got now. It's kind of got that black and the brown and, you know, like it's been handled for years and it's got some wear and tear. So that we do. After this is done. Then you add the wax and let the wax dry. Okay. Now we're back on track. I'm going to blame Azure just because. Just because I can. <laughs> now. After we've done that. Then we get to the stage. Kind of this stage right here. Okay, the wax is dry. Da, 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 da. So then you just take a cloth, any any soft cloth, and you start rubbing. Little mini circles. Get that wax buffed. And it'll start to give that, you know, that shine that leather gets, especially when it's been worn. And, you know, the hands have been touching it and the grease and the oils have been saturating in there. So you get like kind of this. See the shine there? It's shiny and nice. Yes. This is the wax. It's ceramic coat, clear wax. Is it? I got this off Amazon, and it's just, it's it's uh, water based. It's a clear wax to seal and protect surfaces painted with. Uh, it says chalk paint, but I just use whatever paint I want to because that's how I am. <laughs> so you buff you'll buff that after. You want to let it sit 24 hours to get dry and then buff it. Now, I liked to use the, I feel like the clear gesso helps the 
the pastel stick there better. If that makes any sense to you. So now we've gotten to this stage. And this stage is pretty much you're done. Now, you can take this stage farther, but you have to watch what you're doing. You really do. Um, where's your at? No, I just had it here. Now, see, this one, this is what this is why this is another thing I want to show you real quick. You probably I don't know if you can see it or not see it. There's some see can you see the lot like the streaky lininess there? That happened because I used too much wax and I didn't apply it in the circular motion. I applied it long, you know, like streaking, I mean like this, and it left those streaks. But they it still looks nice. Now, where is, there it is. If you want to make sure, if you're going to do this next step, I say put a, put one more coat of wax on it and then redo, redo it. You know, let it sit again, then buffer again. That's my suggestion for this next part because I used, I'll show you the difference, okay? This one had had a, had a lot of wax on it. I applied, this is um, embossing powder and, um, you, know, you know, embossing powder on the cog part. You could have used, you can just use paint. Hi, Dee Dee. You could use paint. You could use um, gold leaf. You can use embossing powder, any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, because like the, how the, some of the old books have this, you know, the gold and stuff. Now, how I got this like more of a dark. It might have been in a fire at one point in time. Uh, look was I used uh, just some black acrylic paint and get a little thing here. That one, that no. I need to get some more dirt rags, dirty rags, and then I just put a little bit there. Not too much, and you kind of want to quickly work it. You want to get it. Try to hope it gets you. Can, you know, have enough to get it down in every little crack and crevice, and then very quickly. Rub it off. You're kind of doing an antiquing. But this is this is why I say use a little bit more wax that helps to have a better buildup and stuff. Then I let that dry and then I buff again and put a little more. You can put a little bit more wax over top of that. That gives you that little bit more uh, look. But what I found that if you put enough, if you put a second coat of wax and you buff it really good, these raised areas will tend to let the color fade back again. So that was that, that kit technique. Now, if you don't have enough, you end up with something like this. That it just didn't, it just tried to stay black. I can probably salvage this, but I was practicing on this with the gold leaf with a pen that I had. No, let's not ever do that again. And see that gold leaf is so, it turned into glitter. Ugh. And the roughness from that gesso also made it stick to each other. So that's a fail. That's a fail. Just a fail, Satan. <laughs> But, I mean, and this works pretty good. Like I said, you'll want to let that black dry and then put another coat of wax over it. That's what I did with this one. And I think that looks pretty close to some dark, beautiful leather, if you ask me. It almost feels like leather, too. How about I stick my finger in some paint? 
and then I stick it on there. And just wipe it off. <laughs> I don't even know what the heck where I stuck it at, where I got it from. Anyways, so that'll give you that nice dark leather look. Now you can see where I didn't get it fully in a crack, so there's some brown there. But this was these are all just a lot of testers. I'll use them anyways eventually, but you gotta test before you can figure it out. Okay, so that was the first technique. And okay, where is that at? Now this right here is like say if you just want regular leather, if you don't want embossed. This was all that techniques I just showed you except for the embossing part on the paper. That's that's it. This is the the original the first part without any gesso and then the wax over the watercolor. So you kind of can get I wanted to give you guys like a, a look of what that would be like if you didn't if you skip that couple steps. So and just use this wax stuff. I mean I'm gonna be showing you a, some you know without the wax completely eventually. Then, next thing I did, my next experiment, which worked out mm, pretty good. Same technique. As far as stuff goes, what you just seen, but this time, I was using these, uh, the Brie Reese. I got these at Hobby Lobby really cheap. Yes, a paper bag would work. And no, this is not a shipping bag or paper bag. This is um, these, I get chewy. And instead of the, in my boxes, instead of the plastic wrap and stuff, it's just this brown paper that's, Cut, you know, it's already pre cut to a certain size with jaggy things in it, and they just bundle a whole put, put a huge bunch of it in there. And so I've got it out the wazoo. Okay, where's my cleanup rag? Gotta get that stuff out of my way. So I've, this is the Brie Reese. I got this at Hobby Lobby on sale. I just use a little bit of this. The colors that I'm using out of this are Mars Orange, uh, Raw Sienna, and Raw Umber. And just, it's just a little bit of those. These are heavy body. And I find that a lot of heavy body for some reason have a gloss finish. So this will have a glossy finish to it. And like, like again, it's just add a little water to them and kind of fudge them around. brown out there a little bit more. You just want to throw some colors that are kind of like a leathery. You can do this. You can do the same look with other with regular colors. I'll show you that in a minute. Well, not in a minute, minute, but now this technique. Have I done a wax over this one? I think I have. No, I didn't do wax with this one because it was glossy already. Now you could add a wax to the to this when you were finished. To um if you want that more matty leathery feel. I don't I might have I mean I'll I'll find out eventually when I get to the next part. So you see you just kind of want to Now, 
Now you can even apply this with a rag or something to give a little bit more, and you can even go. So that's the that's what the second one's done. Um. So that yeah, this is the this is kind of what it's going to look like in the end. It can be darker, lighter. And then when it dries, it'll dry a little darker. But it, see, it still has that sheen to it. It still has a sheen to it. Okay. Now you can put some of that um, wax over it later on if you'd like to. To kind of tone it down. Or you can leave it like this. Depends if you like it kind of shiny, sheeny, whatever. Okay. Move that one out of the way because it's flat still. Okay, where is the... I had everything organized, but you know how that goes. Once you start moving around, it all goes south. Now, where is the one for that? Is this... What I just put down. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. There. Ugh. It was staring me in the face the whole time. So this is what it's going to kind of look like after you're embossing, which I'm going to dry. I will dry this one and, and do a quick. Well, this one's already dried. The. So you emboss it, and then I did the black over it. But see how it still has that. See how it still has that. Sh it has, it's very shiny. So heavy body is. You would definitely want to uh, put. I would put the if you've got it. Put the uh, the wax over it. It'll really tone it down. And to the wax, you can actually, the wax, you can just take your finger in a little rag and DD it, you know. <laughs> and that will tone it down some once it's, once it's dried. So well, I'm not going to waste your time embossing this one because we've already seen how, you know, what parts we're doing there. Now, so that's pretty much it for that part. Now, here comes the last one, and this is the cheapest one. And the most, anybody can do this. Unless you, you know, embossing folders like we just discovered. You can kind of, I would actually, if you're going to use one of these embossing folder things, if you've got the time, I would just roll it, weight it, wet it. Let it sit there for a while so it gets a good, good pattern set into it. Or ask your friends to send you some embossed brown paper. Or um, I'm going to see if there's any other way we can, you can, you can do the embossing thing. Or as there, you can try that one thing and let me know if it works. So now the la this is the la this is the last. Like I said, the last and what I think is the most affordably usable. I'm just using two colors. I'm using nutmeg brown and burnt umber. And this is your apple barrel from Walmart. Everybody has this. If you don't have it, then there's something wrong with you. You're not a true correct. <laughs> You're not a true craft or creator craziness. -um. And thank you, Dee Dee. And just like that one, I mean, you don't really have to water these ones down that much. You just kind of smooch good around. You just don't want to, you want to work them together while they're still a little wet, and a little bit this and that, because you want that leathery. Dimensionally stuff. And you could use another color too if you'd like to, just to 
make it appear better. And this, of course, is matte paint. Most of this is matte paint, which I prefer matte paint. Matte paint kind of has a tooth to it, too, so that helps. And it's you put it on real thin, so you still have that tooth from the paper. Okay. And then you would let it dry. And then you emboss. Okay. Now, this is the fun part, okay? This is the fun, awesome part. Okay. Let me finish buffing this real quick. Oh, let me get that out of there. Yeah, sticking it in paper. Gonna buff this a little bit more on this side. Now, this was done with that technique I just did, okay? Uh, God, that's stupid. I'm, I, I need a vacuum to, to suck up all that crap from the cheap, uh, whatever the gold stuff is. Now, looking at this, see this. Okay, this is what this is what's funny. This side right here, see, it's kind of duller. It's a little bit more flat leather, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Okay, this was treated as well. This was just the acrylic paint, then, then uh, embossed, and then I put on some of the wax. Let it sit overnight and just buffed it, okay? This side... That's really nice looking as well. That almost, you know, I think it's got, it pops out more than this side does. You see the difference? This kind of pushed it back. This kind of made it pop some. This right here, this side right here, that is just paint. With, th that I went over top of it and buffed it just like I did this. Because you have to remember, acrylic is plastic. And I will, here, let me, give me a minute to dry this real quick without deafening you, and I'll be, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I can figure out where my, or not. Oh, I bet you it's because it's got the stupid. I think my mouse died. The sensor for it? That's going to be fun. How am I going to close out of this? Oh, I have a laptop. That's <laughs> no, not working either. Oh, well, wow, great. Anywho, <laughs> you'll just have to plug your ears for a minute while I'm doing this because I'm uh, having technical difficulties. So how's everybody done? Alrighty, so there's that. Let's get the old embossing machine back up here for a minute. We're gonna emboss this real quick. We'll do this one. Whee! 
Well, sometimes it's loud. Uh, I don't have a battery in the, my mouse, son. Mine's wired, and the, the lights are on because it looks like a car. But it's not. I have no mouse that I'm finding up there. Hello. I'm mouseless. My pointer isn't isn't showing up. I might have to get a new. It may have finally died. My, I've had that thing forever. I got it from, from Big Lots. It could just be loose, too. Who knows? But I'm not trying to mess with stuff because that's all I need to do is mess up my life. So basically, so there's there's that. It's fresh. Blah, 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 blah. And then I just you just take And see, that's not buffed. That's buffed. This is so. Yeah, I'm sure, hon. No battery. It's supposed to have a light that lights up right there. That shines down and reads. The light is no longer shining. It has died. My car has died. Long live the car. It's been, I mean, look, it's been powder coated <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. It, it was just getting a good paint job on it, too. So that sucks. And I got to, I think I have my pointer on my laptop turned off. So, well, I found all most of my bossing folders I found at Tuesday mornings. I have a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse. I had one. But they came up missing. But you know how that goes. So that's basically what you can do with that. Now, here's some, you know, like I've got all kinds of different things. This one right here was the one of these. I glued it together later on. I, this was when I was doing spray, color sprays. Put some... All I did was just a color spray and then put some of the wax on, which I haven't buffed this one yet. And this is, right now, I'm just showing you what you can do after. So that's just, you know, I just buffed it a little bit. You can have colored, you know, stained leather, right? These are some other ones I've, I've been playing with a couple different ideas and stuff. This is one of my favorite ones. I wish it was longer. Wouldn't that make a beautiful spine? You know, the spine of a book. Kind of. But now you can see right here, I have some white buildup. I don't know if you can, you probably see that right there. That's from putting too much wax on. So that's what I'm saying. You don't want to put a lot of wax on. Just enough and then buff and then you can add some more. This one was a little, I mean, and I will sit there and if I'm bored, I'll sit there. and You can use, after you've done the initial, you can take your oils from your hand. And rebuff them, you know, just work it up a little bit more. Doesn't hurt nothing. It just makes it pop more. And you can, here's another thing you can do. This this was just using acrylic paint, um, the gold paint. And then this one's a little bit more faded. It looks kind of bronzy. This was... The Re Recollection Signature Glitter Paint. 
I don't know what kind of paint this is. It's very, it's almost very thin and very, it's gorgeous paint. So it, it goes on a much thinner layer. And then you could go over this with the black. That's what I did with the, with this, with the one, with that one that has the cog on it. I went over everything with the black after I, I added it like this stuff. So this was just two different things. I was checking to see how they did. Did they rub off after I put them on because of the wax underneath them? And no, they stayed on good. Now this was, um, this is the, what is the gold leaf? It is so, I don't know. This I'd probably kick back with some black paint just to kill the color back because that's a little too gold for me. It's a little too bright gold. I'm actually thinking about seeing if I can get some copper instead because I'm not liking this gold as much as I would prefer copper. But that's just me. But see, like the, and that would make a great spine for a book too. Oh well, you, I think I think Michael sells embossing folders. Um, uh, they might sell embossing folders. Amazon sells embossing folders, but something like I said, you can you know if you 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 could ask somebody, hey, could you make me a few. Papers and, and mail. I mean, it doesn't cost that much to mail. It doesn't really take that much time if you sit there and it really saves a lot of time of not having to do all these steps. Just using the acrylic and then buffing the acrylic that saves a hundred percent time. Adding that wax is not that. It didn't make that big of a de uh, of a deal. From what I remember, at least I think this was the wax side and this was the other side. I'll have to try it later. But like, you know, I've done different colors, different patterns, different designs. Now see this one, I had a lot of that black uh, pan pastel and it, wobbled it up and it went took it down into the cracks and crevices which is what i love like that's what this one did too it's not gorgeous i think it's gorgeous like that i mean and this is even showing you like how good they are yeah i could because these are the smaller ones i've really been enjoying making these and it really doesn't take take long, and I've got all kinds of pretty ones I can fiddle with. And especially, I really think that that last technique is the best technique for getting stuff done quickest. Um, but that's why I wanted to. I really wanted to try out a few different things before I came on and did the live, so that I could give people options. Yes, embossing folders aren't that cheap to get in, in some senses, but I will look into seeing if there's other ways to kind of add without having to have embossing folders, some, some dimension to your stuff. But you could always ask people, and, and you can even ask, I mean, honestly... I would say the best thing to do, like if I was to emboss something like this, I would do three, probably three layers so it's thicker. Emboss it just like this, just the brown paper. And then you could do it. You know, the person who, who gets these could, you know, they could paint however they want to. They could paint in whatever colors and stuff because that's not going to, once, especially when the, the emboss is there with, you know, and you've, you've got a couple layers, it's on there pretty good. I mean, I've really put in pressure and I'm not losing my dimension. I mean, my dimension's still there just fine. So that could, that, that's another alternative. You could say, hey, I just need somebody to emboss me some brown paper and send it to email. You know, yeah, yeah, email, I'm going to email it to you. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, well, I think they do have some bossing folders on Wish. Takes you a little longer to get there, but I've gotten a few things from Wish that I really love and some things I'm not so sure about. <laughs> but I real I think this is something that anybody could do on a good budget with some time and, and just have fun with it. Uh, I've really been enjoying it and it really does. I can say, I feel like the ones that I, the, the little bit more intense ones have a really good feel of leather. They really do. I mean, this one to me feels like leather and it's just, this is the one I, you know, that, that I just did in acrylic. It has a good feel of leather. I think it makes, these ones are a little, my first ones I did, they have a good feel too. I think this has a little bit more sturdy feel because these ones I used a spray adhesive to adhese the two pages together. And this one I used a, I think it was Mod Podge or something like that to adhese the two pages together in between. And I think that gave it a little bit more sturdiness for the embossing part. So I would say maybe, you know, that of, of that, but yeah, see that I really do think if you're really going for the deep, good, good, good is that, that gesso and that those pan pastels really give you much more dimension and much more of the leather much. I think much, much more. That's, that's my. Hi, Christine. We have that. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. I mean, because I really think that that looks ten times more like leather than with ones without. Like these don't have that. They don't have the depth. They, I mean, they look good, but I think adding just that that little bit. And honestly, I was one of the things I was going to play with. And I haven't hadn't got a chance to. Is um, if you don't have pan pastels, oil pastel, oil pastel, you want a chalky, oily something. Honestly, I think you could probably use like a lot of people have this, but this is, I mean, DD, you've used this. It's very, very similar. It has the same feel, that oily, weird feel that, um, whatchamacallits have. Uh, eyeshadows. So you could use that. But, okay, guys, I have got to get going. I forgot I was supposed to go do something before 8 o'clock. And it's 8.51, so I need to move my butt. Um, thank you guys all for stopping. And see you all later. Thanks for stopping, everybody. Have a good day. Now, hopefully I can get out of this before it all goes to heck in a handbasket. Where is mine? Where's my function? Where's my keypad? Uh, come on. Oh, great. Hopefully I can figure this out and get out of here. Otherwise, I'm, I'm trapped in a stream, guys. I'm trapped in a stream.
cameras off.